I don't think this is part of the trail. It's just up ahead. What's just up ahead? You know how Starbucks has a secret menu? This isn't the secret trail. It might be. How much farther is it? Like 20 feet. Like 20 feet or actually 20 feet? What's wrong? Do you see that marker? Yeah. We are currently standing in one of the most haunted swamps in New Orleans. According to this book, which might be bullshit, the most paranormal activity this side of the Mississippi happens right where we are standing. Oh no, he's scared. That's not... Oh no! You're hilarious. (laughs) Apparently, a serial killer used to bury his body somewhere around here. They tried to find all the pieces, but they think some bodies might still be lurking in the swamp. This is also a common makeout spot. Oh, I see. Oh, we see. What's wrong? Do you hear that? What? Shh. What? Hannah, what are you doing? Where are you going? I saw something. Okay, what did it look like? It was dark. It looked... It's hard to explain. James? What? Stop doing that. It's here. You are listening to The Call of the Void. Stay tuned. Stay safe. If you come a little closer, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to see this small, clearish bottle in my hand. This was actually used in the 19th century to hold opium tablets. It's a real artifact. Despite its extremely addictive qualities, Victorian doctors thought opium was some kind of miracle cure, probably because most of the doctors themselves were addicted to the drug. One of these could be prescribed to treat fever, sleeplessness, coughs, inflammation of the bladder, headaches, wind, or just for fun. They were covered in chocolate or gold and swallowed or injected or sprayed. You heard me correctly, gold. Wealthy aristocrats believed gold was one of the purest ways to take their medicine, so they covered these highly addictive substances with gold. In reality, gold can't be digested and provides our bodies with absolutely no medical benefits, but we do give them points for trying. If you look inside this bottle, you can see that most of the tablets are still covered in gold. Uh, I'll be leaving these uh, these tinctures and bottles out for you to take a look at. You're more than welcome to touch them. Just don't drink them unless you really want to die. Hey, so this is what a history degree gets you, huh? Etsy! Hi, sorry, I uh, didn't see you in the crowd. Story of my life. I, uh, I hadn't heard from you in a few days. Yeah, sorry, I had some stuff. Um, you got a minute? Yeah. Yeah, uh, let me just, um... Hey, folks, uh, we're closing up shop for a moment, but my next tour is at 2.30. Uh, We'll be talking about amputations in the Civil War, if anyone wants to come back for that. Thank you so much. Wow. That's morbid. Oh, I guess I'm pretty desensitized at this point. So, uh, what did you want to talk about? Listen, I don't think your dad was the only one affected by whatever affected him. Okay. Is there somewhere else we could talk? Yeah, we got a back room over here. We use this mostly for storage. Is that your desk? Yeah, I work back here too. Uh, What did you want to tell me? So three weeks ago, a kid in Evansville, Indiana, lost his vision. His visual functions dissolved over the course of 72 hours. But that wasn't the only senses that went. Within another 48 hours, he couldn't hear or speak. And in another day, they pronounced him brain dead. That's weird. Two weeks later, Judith St. Paul in Columbus, Ohio, experienced the same rapid dissolve. Her doctor thought it was a severe case of Alzheimer's, but Alzheimer's doesn't work that fast. Nothing does. So it's a disease? I don't know. 
They go at different rates, loss of senses, memory, ability to communicate. It's all variable. Is it permanent? Hopefully not. So someone can fight it if they're strong? Maybe. Your dad was one of the most rapid cases I've come across. Not comforting, but I'm glad to know he's not alone. How are those other patients? They're missing. What do you mean? Both of them went missing from the hospital. Weird. We'll make sure my dad's safe. Yeah. He, They just start going crazy across the middle of America? Yeah. The eyesight is the most obvious symptom. It's not always the first, but it's so... Life-changing. Right. So I've been looking into eye doctors in the area all over, really. Looking for more... Blind people. Or people losing their vision. And you found one? Is that where this conversation's going? I did, over at the doctor's on Frenchman. Dr. Wilcart? Yeah. My dad goes there. Is he a real doctor? I don't know. Anyway, the patient I met lost his vision very fast. He went from near-perfect vision to certified blindness in about 48 hours. This was about a day ago. How's his mind? He seemed okay the last time I talked with him. When are you meeting him, if you want somebody to go with you? 515. I could text you the info if I had your number. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Uh, it's, it's usually easier to just type it in. Right. You have an Ohio area code. Yeah, uh, we used to live up there. Peebles area, very small. Well, I got to finish my shift. I'll see you at 515. Yeah, uh, thanks for looking into this. Oh, and I told him we're journalists for The Advocate. Needed a reason to visit him, so I've got an ID for you. So we are already lying to him? It's not really lying, it's investigating. I think it is. You were a Boy Scout, weren't you? Yeah. Why? Yes? Hi, I'm April O'Neill from The Advocate. This is my partner, Raphael Green. Hi. The Advocate journalist? That's right. We're looking for Marcus Fletcher. You can come in. Marcus, the journalists are here for you. I hope it isn't a bad time. No, I was just listening to the Food Channel. You met my sister Janice. She's here helping me. I'm going to get back to watching my roux, if that's all right. It smells great. Do you need anything, Marcus? I'm fine. So, Marcus, our article is on some site-related issues people in the area have been reporting. We'd like to see if there's a connection. When's it going to be published? Um, a few weeks. You have a nice family? These pictures on the table? Oh, thanks. Three boys. Five, seven, and nine. I see them on the weekends. Well, I used to see them. We wanted to ask about the last week or so. About the elephant in the room? In so many words, yes. I had an early meeting at the office on Monday. I work in real estate, so I was up early to prepare for a house for a viewing. But when I woke up, my eyes were blurry. This was, I don't know, eight-ish? So I went back to bed for an hour, and when I woke up, it was worse. How much worse? Couldn't see the clock on my stand. And you don't have any relatives with visual disabilities? Nobody in my family wear glasses. I had a boat trip planned this weekend. That's canceled, I guess. Are you physically affected in any other areas? Nothing tastes good. Janice just thinks I'm being dramatic. He's just being dramatic. When did you first notice the loss of taste? Maybe a few hours after I met you at the eye doctor on Monday. Uh, how'd that appointment go, by the way? Did the doctor say anything? He's an idiot. He doesn't know what's going on. Can you tell us a little bit about the events leading up to all this? Were you doing anything unusual the night before it started? I was coming back from a business trip. I run up to our sister office in Nashville about twice a month. I'm sorry, Nashville? That's right. Tennessee. That's a ways. And nothing unusual happened on the trip? I don't think so. You didn't, like, stop anywhere? Oh, yeah, we did. We, when we stopped in Birmingham, there was something. Alabama. Right. I stepped out for a smoke. There was something, like a noise. What kind of noise? Snapping, breaking, 
like branches in a storm, but no, it wasn't. About the elephant in the room, it wasn't a sound. What was it? I heard it, but it wasn't a sound. I could see it, but it wasn't visible. Uh, what do you mean by it? Was it some kind of storm? No, no, it wasn't. I'm sorry, I'm confused. I was just listening to the food channel. But it sounded like snapping. I think so. Did anyone else see it at the bus stop? What bus stop? You said you started losing your sense of taste after the eye doctors. Have you noticed any other senses starting to weaken? I don't have an eye doctor. Uh, right, but when you were there? Before you were blind. Couldn't see the clock on my stand. What? I've been blind for a while. How long have you been blind? I don't remember. Always, I guess. Nothing tastes good. He's an idiot. Doesn't have a clue what's going on. Janice just thinks I'm being dramatic. Couldn't see the clock on my stand. What's going on? I think Marcus just needs some rest. Janice just thinks I'm being dramatic. Thank you both for your time. We're leaving? Yeah. I think we have enough. Where do I go? You stay here. Couldn't see the clock on my stand. That's all the information we're gonna get. Janice just thinks I'm being dramatic. Thank you for your time. Okay, what was that? I think it was an earlier stage of what happened to your dad. It happens that fast? So what do we do now? Do we just wait for another person to go blind? I'm thinking. He was coming down from Tennessee when this happened, and my dad was found up that way. Right. Is that a coincidence? It can't be a coincidence. The snapping and the creaking and the storm? Your dad left a sign in Crofton, Kentucky. If Birmingham is where Marcus was affected, maybe there's something there too. You're saying you want to go on a road trip? Maybe. I can call off work. You're knitting again. I am. Do you need, um... I'm okay. Okay. I talked with Etsy. How was that? I think we might be onto something. There, there's a guy that we met, um, that might be affected just like Dad. What do you mean? We don't know yet. Okay. So, what's in it for her? What do you mean? Why is Etsy Delman, voodoo queen of Bourbon Street, suddenly interested in the good of our family? She's a friend? Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. She seems like she's on our side. I think she's forged a lot of ID cards and probably broken into a lot of buildings, but I think we can trust her. Okay. Uh, those stitches look nice. How are you doing? Like, really? I've been digging through Dad's stuff. He was researching deep quantum physics before his trip. Like parallel universes? Right. Multiple realities, string theory. It looks like... like he was trying to communicate with different universes. Oh, okay. It might have just been a fun side project because... Dad. Right. But... Topher... Do you think Dad was... He was looking into some really abstract stuff. Are we having this conversation? I don't know. Simone. I keep thinking about the last thing I said to him. I wasn't mean or anything. I was just... Nothing. Just normal, you know? Hi, bye, I'm working on this. I didn't... This isn't just Dad. There's more people like him that are also losing their senses. We can fight this. We can get him back. He couldn't hear me, Topher. Today, I went to visit him, and he couldn't hear me. He's not speaking anymore. He's not even saying nonsense words anymore. He's just... You know how much I wanted to hear him say nonsense words? 
but there was nothing. He just lies there and he breathes in and out and in and out and in. Hey, look at me. Can't knit and look at you at the same time. I'm going to solve this. I'm gonna go. Sure. Thanks for driving. Yep. Remarkably smooth cold brew coffee. What was that? Oh, I was just reading the billboard. Oh, you're one of those people that read billboards. Maybe. Get slim, Louisiana. So, Etsy, um, is that short for something? Or just, uh, hmm? like, like a nickname or something? Um, no. You're just named after the online store? The what? The online store. I've never heard of that. You've never heard of Etsy? Etsy Etsy.com? Apparently not. (laughs) What? No one's made that joke. I guess there are too many other jokes to make. I'm the first one to make that joke. So, what is it? Oh, it's like, it's an online store. Um, There's arts and and crafts and and stuff. Okay, so what's toe for a meat substitute? It's short for Christopher. Mm, No, Chris is short for Christopher. Chris Topher. Wow. It suits me better. Wow. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Any normal, not pretentious person would go with Chris. <laughs> yes. It's the pretentious thing that's probably the problem. I mean, we've had Poke Bowls since we were like 12. I honestly don't know what a Poke Bowl is. <laughs> what about you? What about me what? Oh, what's your family like? Uh, I was in foster care most of the time. Gotcha. I'm sorry. That's fine. So there's just about 45 minutes left till we get to the stop. Great. So hopefully we'll find something. Car in a wreck. Call Larry Geck. Okay, so according to their website, which was a little hard to read, the bus stops here for a few minutes to refuel. It doesn't look like much. Not really. It's quiet. I think we're used to New Orleans. So they get off the bus, and then they stand here for a few minutes. Right. And then they get back on the bus. That's generally how it works. I'm just getting a sense of it. There's not much here. Does the grass look dead to you? I think so. Yeah. But it's not over there. It's just dead in this patch. It's dry. There's nothing here. You mentioned. No, I mean there's nothing. Listen. There's no bugs or birds or wind. Even the sun feels stale. It was here. What was? Hey, 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 what's wrong? I'm fine, I'm I'm fine. Breathing is good, let's just focus on that. This is temporary, all right? See that stop sign? You're gonna focus right on that sign and breathe. Breathe to that stop sign. Relax your shoulders. You're doing just fine. Let's uh, let's get you some water, yeah? I don't like this place either. How was the chili? Good. Yeah, it helped. Good. Thank you for all of this. Oh, yeah. You'd probably do the same for me. Or maybe you would make me overpay for a palm reading. I gave you your money back. (laughs) Hey. So your dad went to Kentucky. He did. Yeah. We're still trying to figure that one out. 
but my sister is genius at research. He wrote stuff in the forest up there. How do you know that? I went up to look at them. I thought they might be connected to all of this. When did you do this? A few days ago. We thought it was symbols, but it isn't any modern language Simone and I could find. No. Do you know what they are? I think he might have learned it from somewhere he used to work in Ohio. JM Labs? How much do you know about the lab? Not much. Just that my dad did physics there. I was young. Yeah. Seemed like a cool place, from what I could tell. How were these symbols connected? Could you read them? Yes. What did they say? Awakened from darkness, void of night, life itself to bend and be still. What does that mean? I don't think your dad was driving up to Kentucky last week. I think he was driving down from Ohio. From Jam Labs? You think his old lab is responsible for something like this? Topher... Oh my god! Oh my god. I'll call 911. Oh my god. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Are, are, are you okay? Oh my god. I can't see you. Where's James? What? You hit him. He couldn't see the car. Why did you hit him? You both can't see. Thank you for listening to The Call of the Void. This episode was written and produced by Michael Allen Herman and Josie Eli Lipchinski. This episode stars James Herman, Andy Dilworth, Amanda Buckhalter, Michael Allen Herman, Josie Eli Lipchinski, Mary Claremont, and Barbara Transformers. The Plymouth Community Arts Council is a proud sponsor of The Call of the Void. Our 774 North Sheldon Campus in Plymouth, Michigan is dedicated to the visual and performing arts, hosting monthly exhibits and providing spaces to create your own extraordinary. Visit www.plymoutharts.com for programming and inspiration. We've been all about the arts since 1969. Special thanks to our pre-release donors, Christine Herman, Deb Jackson, Elise Paquin, Adam Davies, and Jason Such. The Call of the Void is an independent audio drama, and we rely entirely on donations to keep us going. If you have the means and would like to help, please consider donating to our show on our website at acornartsandentertainment.com slash the void. You can also help us by leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. A single review goes a long way in helping us find new listeners. For more details, please visit our social media on Instagram or Facebook at The Call of the Void Podcast or Twitter at The Call of the Void P. We'll be back next week to continue the pure science fiction delight of The Call of the Void. Stay tuned, stay sane.